You know, it says in the scriptures, in Genesis 4, 7, it says to Cain, God is speaking to him before he goes out and does his evil deed of slaying his brother. God said to him, if you do well, will you not be accepted? But if you do not well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. You should rule over it. See, the key to understanding true repentance and coming to Christ in the present day is the key of repentance, of the stopping of sin, ruling over sin. So doing well, when God orders man, when he tells man to amend his ways or uh, forsake the evil of his doings, stop the evil of his doings, he's telling the same thing as he told Cain all the way back here in Genesis 4-7. If you do well, will you not be accepted? So doing well, doing well is having the eyes of the understanding open to the truth is the first thing instead of being spiritually blind to it. But see, a lot of the people ask the question that if man is not born a sinner, as we, we advocate, man not being born a sinner, he's born neutral, he's born in an innocent state, as the Bible so clearly states in so many places, then what makes man sin? Why is it uh, impossible, or nearly impossible, to find anyone that doesn't sin if man's not born a sinner, if, he doesn't, if he's not born with the nature of Adam in a disabled, uh, depraved state? as all the churches are teaching? Well, the, the, the answer is easy if you look into the scriptures and understand the world to which man is born into. It, it, it describes it very easily. See, God's ultimatum to mankind appealed to the free will that he created him with. If you do well, will you not be accepted? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. If you repent, if you come, you clear yourself of wrongdoing. As the, scripture, as the scripture instructs, if you stop the evil of your doings, amend the, amend the evil of your ways, will you not be accept, will, will you not find mercy? The mercy seat's open to those that come through on the condition of repentance. But see, people today are told, well, they're, they're born in a state of depravity and in inability and unwillingness and all this other nonsense that these men debate and debate and debate, write books about, and it puts people into a... a kind of an attitude where they're sitting around waiting for God to change their desires. Because, well, they can't, see. They, they can only choose to do wrong. So after somebody's told that for so long, well, then it gets down to a state in which they look like they were born sinners. That's what I'm going to show you here. But the, the, the admonition goes out from God. That's why I start with Genesis 4-7. We're going to look at Romans chapter 1 here. So man's response, of course, in Cain's case, was to turn his back on God, do, do what he pleased, and go out and slay his brother. And then it, he, of course, is judged. But if you do not well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Rule over it. It doesn't say that God's going to obey for you, that he's going to impute some kind of a righteousness to you through a Savior and make you righteous even though you remain wicked, and all this nonsense that's being taught by these big-name preachers today. No, you should rule over it. Just like in the New Testament where you should lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and then come and receive with meekness the implanted word that's able to save your soul. So you've got to rule over it by stopping it, because you have the ability to choose, just like Cain had the ability to either do well or do evil. He chose the evil. But the preachers tell you, no wickedness will befall you. You shall not surely die, just like they were told Adam and Eve. You shall not surely die. Even though God said, if you oh, disobey me, eat of that tree, you shall surely die. Satan said, no, you shall not surely die. The preachers are telling you the same thing. That you can commit adultery and fornication and pornography and drunkenness and you shall not surely die. Because those sins were forgiven 2,000 years ago, wiped out, and once you trust in that, it's irreversible, and, and all this other stuff. But you, you're taking their word for it. You don't know that it teaches that in the Bible. You can't show that it teaches that anywhere. But you're putting a lot of hope into what them guys are saying. So then why do people then become such vile sinners if they're not born sinners? I'll give you some explanations here. Romans chapter 1. Starting in verse 18. 
if you want to read along. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness and godliness, and men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. For what may be known of God is manifest to them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, his eternal power in Godhead. They are without excuse. All because all they, they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. So the process of the, spirit, of, the, of the spiritual blindness, the eye being bad, I'll show you that in a minute, is they suppress the truth. They suppress truth. See, over here, the eyes of the understanding are open to the truth, listening to the truth. They suppress the truth in unrighteousness, ungodliness. You shall not surely die. Uh, the, uh, the, no wickedness will befall me, no matter what I do. I'm eternally secure in my, in my sins. They suppress the truth. Then what's, then what's it going on to say? Then what's it going on to say? They knew God. See, his, his attributes, his power, his Godhead were clearly revealed to them. Paul testifying that man is without excuse. He has no excuse whatsoever to not worship God at least to the best of his ability, until the, the full truth is revealed to him. Like Cornelius, for example, in Acts chapter 10, where he was a devout man, a righteous man, offering uh, alms to the poor, prayers to God. Now, it says that God will not hear sinners, so he couldn't have been classified as a sinner. So God sent Peter to give him the inauguration of the gospel in the Holy Spirit. That's what it's talking about here. They're fully, but what's that? What happens then? Men are without excuse because they knew God. See, they knew Him, meaning they were intimately acquainted with God. That's what that word means. They're full and complete knowledge. It's not just what I know about God. No, it's a full and complete knowledge that they had of God through His universe, through His creation. So they suppress the truth, and then their foolish heart become darkened. The heart or the mind, the spiritual blindness, is darkened. Darkened. That's the spiritual blindness. Remember what Jesus said. See, what, what I likened here, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verses 23 and 24, if the eye is bad, the whole body is full of darkness. And how great is that darkness? See, that's what happens here. They suppress the truth, although they appear to be religious, they have a form of godliness, they, they want to pretend that they're Christians, but they suppress the truth and unrighteousness by preaching the lies that you can sin and not die. So their heart becomes darkened to the truth. Becomes darkened to the truth. Professing to be wise, they become fools. See, all these preachers, they profess to know the, the Greek and understand the deeper things of God. Just like it goes on in chapter 4. Instruct the, the foolish and they're a guide to the, to the people and, and to the law. As it goes on to talk about chapter 2. But yet, at the same time, they, they're foolish in their darkened hearts because they're arguing in favor of sin. Because they're telling people Jesus obeyed for them. Because they're saying that God doesn't see me, He sees Jesus. He doesn't see my sin. He trades the places with me. He, I take His track record. And all that nonsense that they preach, it's because they have a heart that's darkened. Although I know they appear to be, to be righteous. Remember, they, they appear as lambs, but they're inside ravenous wolves. So they became darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. They changed the glory of God into a, of the incorruptible God into an image. Image. In verse 23, made like corruptible man with birds and four-footed and beasts and creeping things. So they create the image. Man's darkened heart creates an image of God in the heart. We'll see that when we get to when we get to the scripture in Second Thessalonians. He exalts this God in his heart, the throne of his heart, of his mind. This is saying, this is what John's describing in Revelation thirteen with the image. The image is not something physical, not something tangible. The image being what they've created in their own minds as God. And they worship that. They bow to it. They sing.